10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have engine ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying USSF-12 for the United States Space Force. Pitch over program, body range look good. NPU's gone to closed loop. System response looks good. Now 20 seconds into flight. Atlas is now completing the pitch over maneuver. Body rates continue to look good. rd 180s throttled down slightly to partial thrust. Response looks good. Now 36 seconds into flight. Atlas V is now passing Mach 1. rd 180 continue to look good in partial thrust mode. Seeing good chamber pressures on all SRBs. And 49 seconds into flight, max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. SRB chamber pressures also look good. Now passing one minute into flight. RD-180 now throttling back up to full thrust as expected. Chamber pressures on the SRBs continue to look good. RD 180 engine operating parameters also look good. Now 1 minute 23 seconds into flight, approximately 3 minutes now remaining in the boost phase of flight. And at this point in the flight, Atlas V now weighs just one half of its liftoff weight. And see SRB chamber pressure is tailing off now. And we have SRB burnout. 1 minute 45 seconds into flight, RD 180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. And we have jettison of all four solid rocket boosters. Vehicle has gone to closed loop steering. Body rate responses look good. Just past two minutes into flight now. RD-180 throttling down slightly as expected. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. and two minutes now remaining in the boost phase of flight. Atlas V is now 50 miles in altitude, 78 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,000 miles per hour. Two minutes, 40 seconds in. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. Vehicle body rate's looking good throughout boost phase. And the Centaur Reaction Control System is now pressurizing to flight level. System response looks good. Coming up on three minutes into flight. RD-180 now throttling to maintain a constant 2.5G acceleration limit, seeing good response on the RD-180. Body rates continue to look good throughout boost phase. Now passing three minutes, 20 seconds into flight. Approximately one minute now remaining until BECO. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison and CFLR deck jettison. Vehicle's now throttled back up slightly. Engine response continues to look good. And RD-180 now throttling to maintain a constant 4.6G acceleration limit in preparation for BECO. And we have boost phase chill down. Passing four minutes into flight. Vehicle systems all continue to operate nominally throughout boost phase. Body rates continue to look good. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good as it maintains that acceleration limit. Standing by for BECO shortly. And we have BECO booster engine cutoff standing by for stage step. And we have good indication of stage separation. We have pre-start on the RL-10 standing by for ignition. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Chamber pressure looks good. Body rates look good.
Centaur's gone to closed loop steering. Body rates continue to look good. Now five minutes into flight. RL10 chamber pressure continues to look good. Body rates look good. This first burn of today's mission will last approximately six minutes, 18 seconds. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus five minutes and 14 seconds. We just heard flight commentator Patrick Moore confirm the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight and all systems continue to operate nominally. Our next event, Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur in approximately six minutes. As we approach our next milestone, we'd like to share a recent conversation with U.S. Space Force's Colonel Heather Bogsdee. Hi, I'm Colonel Heather Bogsdee, the Senior Material Leader for the Resilient Missile Warning, Missile Tracking, and Missile Defense Acquisition Delta from the Space Sensing Directorate at Space Systems Command in Los Angeles Air Force Base, California. At Space Systems Command, we are focused on the threat. And right now, we are at unprecedented times where the threat is coming at us faster than ever, with dimmer targets that we are currently working to detect better. The launch of the USS F-12 and wide field of view will really help shape how we implement our architecture moving forward and get after that threat. We are working with the Space Development Agency and the Missile Defense Agency in a combined program office to have an integrated missile warning architecture that will soon pivot away from GEO towards the MEO and LEO layers on orbit. The data from wide field of view will help pathfind and demonstrate what technologies we want to use in the future. Wide field of view has a 4K by 4K focal plane. With this, we'll be able to see a larger area of the Earth than ever before, over 3,000 plus kilometers at any one time. It also has a tactical cryo cooler, which has been used in the air domain, and now we're eager to see how it will be applied to the space domain. If this works, we can see significant cost savings as we scale up our architecture in the future. Another way that Wide Field of View is going to be helping us is with data exploitation. We're performing data exploitation out of our TAP lab in Boulder, Colorado, and the team there is really looking at how do we enhance our algorithms to really uh, refine the battle space characterization and uh, missile warning capabilities that we currently have. Wide Field of View is really going to help demonstrate that moving forward. It's also going to help us operationalize the data and get it integrated into the integrated tactical warning attack and assessment architecture that we're currently seeing with the SIBRS missions. We're very eager for the upcoming launch of SIBRS Geo 6 as it will be the second OPR spacecraft in a very short duration of time, really making our missile warning capability more robust than ever. We'd like to thank all of our mission partners and industry partners that have helped us to get to this point so far. Millennium Space Systems for the integration of the payload and the bus development, L3 Harris for the payload, United Launch Alliance for helping launch our satellite into orbit, for the Space Dynamics Laboratory for the data exploitation and algorithm development, our partners at the Aerospace Corporation, and our partners at NASA Ames. Without all of them, this would not be possible, and we're very eager to see all the amazing capabilities that Wide Field of View is going to bring to orbit.